Misha, Misha's kind of, he's sort of the man straddling the two worlds. Elena is, is a Russian journalist who lives in Russia. Um, Misha was born in Moldova in the former Soviet Union, and yet he lives in New York, Brooklyn, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, Manhattan. Oh, Manhattan, okay. You really live in New York. And then, but, but he goes over to Russia in the former Soviet Union to report to Europe, and then, and then we have Zach, who's like, you know, American, who comes in totally from, from the outside. So talk, can you talk to us a bit about how you play these two different roles and how they work to your advantage or work to your disadvantage? Because right. you're both an insider, but you're also an outsider. Right. Uh, well, thank you for having me. Um, I've been authorized to speak on behalf of all photographers. But <laughs> 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 and uh, particularly those for <laughs> Sure. Um, Please. So, I mean, where photography is different uh, from writing and from video is a couple of things. Uh, at the moment, I would say 99 out of 100 photographers working in Russia or in the region or in the world are freelancers. So the, the risks we take, the sorts of jobs we take and we don't take are very different from a staff, a staffer. But just reality. So that's just something to keep in mind before I... Uh, the other thing, nature of photography in relation to journalism is very different from in the writing. Uh, because photography, by its essence, you're photographing consequences. You're reporting consequences, right? You're reporting something happened and you show up to make it, to kind of, to illustrate it or you're doing portraiture. But you almost never kind of, in, you know, you're not a paparazzo, you know, with a long lens, because then most of the time when you're asked to do something like that, the sort of the thing, if you're an adult, you have to ask yourself, what's the added value of this work, you know, like of this risk? And most of the time, there is no value. So those things put together, the other thing, of course, all of that being said, local locals who have even less support take are even more exposed. And I'm not talking about locals who work for the New York Times in Russia. I'm talking about people who are doing something for a regional website, who are most vulnerable by Russian standards. You know, like they are the, they are the most vulnerable group, not me, not those who live in, let's say, in Moscow and St. Petersburg and get assigned by Washington Post to travel to Siberia. There is very little risk with, you know, in that. Um, so I would say Russia in general, yeah, there are risks. There are risks, you know, there, you just, there are risks in East Village, but maybe not anymore. <laughs> but in broader context of things, even in terms of the sorts of risks that exist in the region. Um, Russia is pretty, kind of, I would say, average. There are countries like Ukraine, if you don't count, let's say, the front line, where it's infinitely easier to work, has always been for a reporter. There are places like Belarus and Central Asia, where it's a lot harder in terms of surveillance. And uh, so Russia is, if you know what you're doing and you, you know, you, Again, like, if you think things through before you do them, Russia is okay. Uh, but a little anecdote about where my mix background uh, kind of was kind of potentially exposed, but it was funny. Uh, so I used to work a lot in Eastern Europe, Eastern Ukraine, before the war. Donetsk and all those places. And I was working on a story in Ukraine, and uh, I had to get out after the war began. And I had to get access from the Ukrainian side, from the mil Ukrainian military, but also from the rebels to get. So I have all, all of that access secured. I have an assignment. I, have a I even have a travel grant. So everything is taken care of. And I've been to Donetsk. Like I've, I've actually lived and worked in Donetsk in my previous life before journalism. So I know, I know everything very well. And then a local friend is like, he's like, Misha, he's like, what are you doing? It's like, just look at yourself. Like, to, the, to them, you're a CIA. 
like two, uh, like a 17 year old kid manning the, the rebel checkpoint, like with your, with your haircut, with your accent, with your American passport, they won't care. They will, they will look at you and think you're a spy. And they, they think they, they, they just got themselves a promotion. So you have to, like, is your story worth the risk? Even with all the permissions. Like, by the time the commander will show up to the checkpoint, there might be trouble. Like, you, have, you would have an easier time if you were from Wisconsin. You know, just like, you're American, you, look, you sound American, no questions, but you speak Russian without an accent, you have an American passport, you're a photographer. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like, I'm worried about that 17-year-old kid, like, just like, see, like, who watched way too many movies because they're bored, they're at che checkpoint, you know, it's boring. You know, and, like, are you sure it's worth, your, st your study is worth the trouble? So, I was and like... I pulled out. I said, I, I was like, you're right. And this, is a, this was a very experienced war photographer, an old friend. And I was like, you know, you're absolutely right. This makes no sense. You know? And I ended up doing the story anyway, and it was not worth the trouble. So these are the sorts of risks you have to think through to get work done as a photographer. And I have many more stories like that.